Hey everyone, Jim here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the WCDC NetLab environment. This is an online environment that can be accessed in the classroom or at home to complete various coursework and activities during your time here at WCDC. This environment can be accessed using most any device and any web browser. In the case of today's demonstration, I'll be using Windows 11 along with Google Chrome. The first step is to navigate to netlabs.wctc.edu. You'll be presented with a login page, and by default, you'll log in using your WCTC username without the email portion. So in the case of my example, I have a test account named Jim Test. Your instructor will, will provide you with an initial password that you'll use to sign into this environment. And after you sign in for the first time, you're going to be prompted to select a new password. You'll, be you'll have to confirm some just basic settings such as your email address, time zone, and other preferences. And then you'll be brought to your account dashboard. Once you log in for a second or a third time, you'll use that new password that you just set and your preferences will be automatically saved. Now at this point, you can schedule a lab. To schedule a lab, you'll go under the schedule menu and you're gonna schedule a lab for yourself. Within this menu, you're gonna have a list of various labs that you can schedule for particular courses. In my example, I'm, add, I'm added into a Security One course and I can schedule labs for Security One. Labs within the NetLab environment can be either persistent or non-persistent. Persistent means that any changes you make within the lab environment will persist, they'll stick around. This can be really helpful if you're working on a project that may take several days or weeks to complete. You can work on a piecemeal, maybe for a few hours each night and your changes will stick around. The non-persistent labs are great for just quick learning, uh, generally for a couple of session, couple hour session at a time. Uh, when your session ends uh, and you come back maybe another time or another day, Anything you had done within that lab environment is going to be destroyed. It's not going to be there, uh, and it's just going to be kind of a clean slate. Both can have a, a lot of really great perks, but there's also some things to keep in mind. Uh, first off, if you're working in a persistent lab, if you make a mistake and you mess up your virtual environment, well, it's going to be on you to fix. Even if you restart the lab, uh, those changes, whatever you did to break that virtual machine, uh, it's still going to be broken. The disadvantage with the non-persistent lab is, well, if you uh, don't quite get your lab done in time or if you, have to, if you have to step away for some specific reason and come back, well, you may have to start the lab over from scratch. So just be mindful that there's two different kinds of labs. In many courses, you'll have kind of a mix of both. However, in our Security One class that I'm logged into currently, we only have non-persistent labs. How do you know if a lab is persistent or non-persistent? Well, generally speaking, if you see NDG Security Plus, these are all non-persistent labs. Uh, these are made by the company NDG and they're provided for to our school to use. We've also built some custom labs, such as the Security One Ubuntu and others that are used in other courses. Your instructor will tell you whether a lab is persistent or non-persistent, so make sure you listen up, uh, look at some instructions for some information whether they're persistent or not. Again, thinking about the scope of Security One, let's go in and let's schedule a lab. I'm going to go into the version three labs, which is what our security one course is currently using. And then within here, you have different labs to choose from. If you want to inspect a lab without scheduling it, you can click the drop down menu on the right and say preview lab. This will bring up a PDF document that is a set of lab instructions. Uh, and this is going to be a very familiar document because most of the, the built in uh, non-persistent NDG labs are going to have a step-by-step -step PDF that walks you through each lab. Generally have a table of contents followed by a network diagram, login credentials for each of the lab machines along with IP address information, and then followed by step-by-step -step guide. A couple of notes as you're going through and following this guide, uh, if you see a term or technology that's unfamiliar, I would definitely take a moment to pause and do a little bit of research. Uh, these guides are great for walking you through a lab, but oftentimes I find they fail to provide a lot of context about why we do the things that we're doing or what the tools that we're doing actually are supposed to accomplish. 
So as an example, if you're not sure what Security Onion is or what uh, Shellshock is, I would take a few moments in this kind of example just to go off and do a little bit of research. Another thing to note is it's incredibly easy to miss a step in these lab instructions. So if you notice that this lab isn't working out as expected, uh, make sure you double, you double check this PDF to make sure you haven't missed a step. Occasionally, I have found a few small typos in these PDFs. Uh, as an example, the, the screenshot is usually correct, but occasionally like the text that uh, is the, in the actual embedded in the instruction is incorrect. So in, as an example, you might see this uh, username be sadmin, and as you can see that it should actually be so admin. So just make sure you pay attention to both screenshots and the written instructions. If one method doesn't work, then try the other. If you actually want to launch the lab, you're gonna navigate back to that drop-down menu and instead say schedule lab. NetLabs runs on top of a VMware vSphere environment. So on the back end, we have some hypervisors, some hosts that are set up with lots of memory, compute, storage, and all that good stuff. These labs typically spin up a variety of virtual machines, anywhere from one to let's say 10 different VMs all at once. So it does consume a considerable amount of resources on our infrastructure to run these VMs. We don't have enough infrastructure to run all of the course labs at one time. So you have to schedule a set of time to run a specific lab on our infrastructure. This is so you don't have everything scheduled for hours or days on end, and it keeps the resources available for other students that might potentially want to use it. If you want to schedule a lab, what you'd need to do is select a start and end time. This red bar represents the current time, and it's usually a good idea to make sure that your lab reservation starts during the current time and not in the future. If you were to schedule a lab to, let's say, start at 9 o'clock, and it's not even 8 o'clock yet, you could schedule it, but you wouldn't be able to enter or actually use a lab for another hour, which would be probably pretty disappointing. So I'm going to go ahead and click just before the red bar so that my lab is starting immediately at 7.49 a.m., uh, my clock on my computer as an FYI is off. That's why it looks, looks like the time is different. And you can select an end time. Generally, this is no more than four hours. Uh, that's because our courses are four hours in length. So you could schedule a lab at the start of class and have access to it throughout the cor full course session duration. Uh, my advice would generally be schedule the lab for longer than you think you're going to need it. Uh, if your time reservation ends out or if you run out of time, you can extend it, but only by like 30 minute ish increments, only a few times. And if you miss the button to click the extend reservation, that'll eventually pop up on your screen. Uh, what happens is your lab will shut down uh, and you'll have to restart the work again because this is a non-persistent lab. Uh, most of these labs will probably take around an hour or so to complete. Some will take longer, some will be a little bit shorter. Uh, so I'll just say, sure, two hours of time. I have a decent amount of buffer. If I think it's going to take one hour, I'm going to double that and I'm going to schedule my lab for two hours just to be safe. You'll click submit and then your reservation quote unquote will be scheduled, which essentially means it's going to boot up a set of virtual machines for you. You'll click on enter lab. And within here, it says initializing pod. Essentially what's happening is those VMs are booting up on the back end on the infrastructure. There is roughly what I think I saw like six or seven listed in that PDF document. So this is going to take a minute or two. So we just got to be a little bit patient. Just like that, our environment has loaded. Uh, you have some, some tabs at the top of our browsing window here. These tabs indicate either different virtual machines or different types of assets that you can view. First off, you usually have a network topology, which is a network diagram. Once again, listing off all the VMs within our environment, along with IP address and network information. Next, we have content. This has that PDF of those lab instructions. And then status. And you'll notice that you can only generally have one tab up at a time. So my general advice is if you have dual monitors, it works pretty well, is I typically like to download a copy of the instructional PDF. And then I'll open this PDF and then maybe put this tab on another second monitor. So on one monitor, I can be following along with the instructions. And on the other monitor, I can have NetLabs up so I can walk through um, the lab activity. Looking at this PDF, the first step is this, spe this specific guide is going to have us log into the Security Onion. So as an example, if you wanted to sign in, uh, you would go into the VM by clicking on the tab 
type in a username. And those credentials from the lab document and you will sign into the VM. Um, I'm actually going to do Kali instead just for fun. So I'll click on Kali Linux. And we'll give it a second to load. So a couple things with these virtual machines. Uh, number one, I guess I'll say is you can only have one active NetLab session at a time. So if you log into NetLabs on one computer, and then let's say you have a laptop and you log into your laptop, it's going to log you out of your first session. So just be mindful of that. If you want to have NetLabs open up on multiple devices, that's not something that's currently possible. So you're limited to just one login at a time. And I'm currently logged into Chrome. Uh, let's say as an example, you wanted to have two virtual machines up at a time because maybe you have multiple monitors or maybe you want to just have a bigger window. This is kind of narrow and thin. What you can do is you can undock your VM. So you can click the down arrow and say undock. And you can make this bigger. And this will make this virtual machine larger and take up your full screen for you to be able to use. Uh, this works really well. It's like a standard uh, VM console where you can just access it uh, by clicking, dragging, typing, and all that other fun stuff. There is one thing to note though. You cannot copy and paste into and out of NetLabs. So let's say as an example, you are following your PDF and there is a command you have to type. Let's say it's this command right here. You may think, oh, I'm going to copy this command to my clipboard, go over to my NetLabs window, and paste it in. It's not going to work. You cannot paste into or copy out of the NetLabs environment. It's a sandbox lab environment, so everything has to be typed in manually. When you're done with your lab, you can just close out the windows. And you'll see here, it gives you an indication of how much time is remaining. Uh, you just need to wait patiently and the time will end eventually. Uh, if you are done and you wanna force or end your reservation, you can also do that by going under the reservation menu and you can end reservation now. If you want to, let's say, switch activities, as you saw when we were scheduling the lab, it went from lab 01 down to like lab 20 something. Uh, you can do that without ending and creating a new reservation. You can go under change exercise and you can switch exercises into another task. So let's say you finished the first lab and you still have plenty of time left. Uh, you could switch into a second lab, click submit, and it'll load up the same reservation, but with a different set of instructions. Mm. One thing I didn't mention at all, uh, if you go back under schedule, and I apologize for this, and schedule lab for yourself, you'll notice that I scheduled a lab in this first column. So the reason why I did this, uh, each of these columns are essentially what's known to, known to be as a pod of machines, meaning that uh, it's essentially a slot that you can schedule and use in the lab. There's roughly 30 slots that can be filled, and that's because our classes have roughly 24 students, plus an instructor, plus multiple sections. So we may have other students that are working on security one homework at the same time. So the way that this works is you just want to pick a free column, uh, whatever's first that doesn't have an active reservation. So as you can see, my first reservation is currently active, so I can't schedule this same pod. But if I go one more over to the right, this one's available. And that's all that means. Cool. So that's it for today's video. I hope this gave you kind of a nice overview in terms of how to use NetLabs at WCTC. Uh, if you have any questions, I would encourage you to reach out to your instructor. Have a great day.